Well, hey there. Welcome to the Kim Constable podcast. Nobody cares. Work harder, baby. Well, I know I promised you an episode on squatting this week, but I'm afraid we've had to do a little bit of a detour from squatting and squatting will indeed happen next week, I promise. Because why are we doing a detour? Well, I had the very last minute opportunity to interview someone who I have followed for many years. You may never have even heard of her, but you may have heard of her beauty brand, or you may have not. But her name is Maria Hatzistefanis, and she is quite simply phenomenal. She is the founder of Rodeal Beauty and also Nip and Fab. And actually, I have started seeing Nip and Fab, her kind of less expensive or less premium brand, but still just this fabulous brand. Um, in Tesco, which is our local supermarket, whenever I go shop there. And of course, every time I see it now, after listening to her audiobook, I'm like, oh, there it is. Um, the products are just phenomenal. And apart from the products being phenomenal, Maria herself is a self-made entrepreneur. She was um, born in Greece. She now lives in London. She's a best-selling author, TV personality, podcaster, um, and she's known in the industry as not only being an advocate of entrepreneurs, but also a very in-demand speaker where she motivates and inspires and encourages people to really be the best that they can be and achieve their goals and dreams. And doesn't that just sound like something that we also are big advocators of on the Kim Constable podcast? So it really was um, a marriage or a match made in heaven. And this interview was just fabulous. Um, I wasn't um, I wasn't prepared for just how much I would love Maria, but I definitely felt like we were kindred spirits in many ways. She's um, around the same age as me, give or take a few years, as she said. She has uh, two beautiful boys. She built her business when her kids are young. She has achieved a phenomenal success by thinking big, taking risks, creating a buzz and building her own personal brand. And that was a lot of bees in one sentence. Um, and she really does does, you know, she really does teach that anyone can do whatever it is that they want to do if they just put their minds to it. She's also the best-selling author of two books. It was uh, the first book that I read was years ago, which was How to Be an Overnight Success. Um, and honestly, that book just blew me away. It was so great to listen to and also to hear her backstory. And then, of course, you know, her second book, which came out in January 2020, I think, which was called How to Make It Happen, A 10-Step Guide to Motivating Yourself and Making Your Dreams a Reality. And Maria is just very inspiring. And apart from being very inspiring, she really is very down to earth. And we did have a lot in common. We talked a little bit about, which you'll hear in the interview, we talked about, you know, how you always get to the end of the, the day and feel like you've disappointed at least one child. And about how, you know, people keep saying to us, oh my God, you know, is it not amazing? Do you not just, are you not so proud of what you're done? And you never really feel like you've made it. No matter how big you get, you just don't ever really feel like you've made it. You just feel like you're still little Kim from Island McGee or little Maria from Greece. Um, but it does seem phenomenal when other people look at what you've done. So you're just going to love her. She was absolutely down to earth. Um, and she's also been on things like Project Runway a couple of times. She has done, you know, many, um, she was like, did a, a promo or a thing with Kylie Jenner a few years ago. She talks about that and what that was like walking, you know, being photographed with Kylie Jenner and being like, is this really my life? Um, and uh, you definitely should pick up a copy of her book or both of her books. They're available to listen on Audible um, or available to purchase and hard copy on Amazon. And also we do talk about her skincare routine because she looks about 12. I'm not even joking. She looks, I was like, is it a good filter or are you just naturally this way? And not only is not only all of that, okay, if you don't just love her already from the introduction I've given you, um, she went vegan or plant-based last September. So she was a big meat eater, a self-confessed meat eater. Most, you know, most European people are. And she now does not eat any meat. And I sent her a couple of plans after we had finished the podcast and she said she was going to send me some products that she talked about. And so it was a win-win for everybody. Um, and yeah, I just know that you're going to love her. So I'm going to start waffling on now about her and I'm going to uh, go to the interview so that you can hear how fabulous she is for herself, for yourself. But uh, what I want to say before we get there is don't forget to leave me a review if you want to win a Sculpted Vegan program. Yes, sirree. All you have to do is leave a review wherever you listen to the podcast, take a screenshot of your review, preferably before you post it, because sometimes it disappears into the abyss of the review platform. And send me a screenshot on Instagram. And every single month, um, one of my team will do a draw for uh, a winner of a Sculpted Vegan program, which includes 
the $1,500 Sculpt and Shred program, which is not currently available to purchase. So it's the only way you can get in the back door. If you want to copy that, do leave a review. It takes two minutes to leave a review and send me a picture and you could win a $1,500 program. Okay, so let's go to the interview and then I will catch up with you guys again at the end. Maria, so wonderful to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for agreeing to be here today. I am so excited. Thank you for having me, Kim. Now, I have to be honest, I did go back and listen to my audible version of your book, How to Be an Overnight Success, just to get the correct pronunciation of your surname, because I hate messing up people's names. So it is Maria, tell me if I get it right, Hatsi Stefanis. Perfect. Perfect. Ah, you see? <laughs> I am very impressed. You're so good, Kim. Oh, thank you so much. That makes me feel so good. Um, Maria, let me tell you uh, why I particularly wanted to have you on today, because I remember about two years ago, I, I started my business about three years ago, and I am an avid reader, an avid listener of um, anything that will help me to be more successful. And I remember scrolling Audible one day, and your book popped up in the suggestions on Audible, which was How to Be an Overnight Success. And I thought, you you know, and of course, I know enough about business to know there really are no overnight successes, but I love the title and I thought, ah, and I love the cover. I thought it looked great. And I thought this is going to be a good book to read. So I listened, um, I listened to the audiobook, and I have to be honest, um, <laughs> I had, I had not heard of Rodial before I listened to your book, but this was about two years ago, I think. And I just loved your story. And I started following you on Instagram and I loved following your stuff. And then I, uh, I read your next book, which was how to make it happen. And I just, and then one day I was like, I just think I need to have this girl on the podcast because I have to, you know, you're a mother like me. I think we're the same age, 42. Is that correct? around yeah let's uh yeah. okay yeah <laughs> you're like yeah, give or take a little <laughs> give or take a few years um but I'm uh I you know I just loved your story and I know that my reader or my listeners will uh will love it as well so I really just wanted to to dive in um to dive into to your success story because you have built this incredible brand you have two brands Rodial and Nip and Fab is that right Correct. Yes. Tell yes. us about your brand just to begin. In case anyone doesn't know about the brand or what it is that you do, can you give us a little bit of background? Absolutely. Um, so um, I uh, started my career as a beauty writer for Seventeen magazine back in Greece, where I'm from. I did that for a little bit, but I was always fascinated with business. So um, I, I found my way to New York and um, studied business. And uh, I, I accumulated a lot of um, student loans I had to pay. So um, I got a job in banking. And um, I, at that point in my life, I didn't know where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. I was just uh, moving from one place to the other and trying to pay my bills. Um, so I started working in banking first in New York, then uh, moved to London with work. Uh, I did that for a couple of years. And um, I got called into the boardroom and got fired. <laughs> and um, I it was my first big job. It was my early 20s. Um, I was devastated, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And right. that's when I decided to start my brand, Rodia. So it all started by getting fired. <laughs> that is the best. I just love hearing that. And then you um, moved to London, so, is that right? After New York? Yeah, so I was uh, I was already in London with uh, with work, with uh, the bank that I was working for. And um, at that point, I um, didn't want to go back to banking. Didn't want to... I, I loved business, but I knew I needed to be in business in a different capacity. Yeah. And I went back to my days um, when I used to work in a magazine. And I love beauty. Um I looked at the market and at, that's 18 years ago. There wasn't a lot. There was basic facial moisturizers and one toner and one type of cream cleanser. There wasn't much. So I saw a gap um, in the skincare market for a brand that would uh, offer targeted treatments to specific skin concerns and not just wrinkles, but um, under eye circles and pigmentation and um, uh, skin loosening. And I just wanted to come up with a solution with any problem that you've ever had. So that's how it all started. Um, I tried to get funding. Um, I pitched to um, some VCs and investors. I ended up not getting funding. 
devastated, devastated. Um, it, it wasn't just about the money. It was, it would have been a valid validation for me if someone said, okay, well, I will invest in you because I believe in your idea. So here I, I am dealing with a couple of issues. One was lack of money. The other was I didn't get the val- validation I was looking for. So, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to start s- small. Um, I had, um, very little savings for my days in banking. And um, and I said, I'm just going to launch with four products, um, do what I can and see where it takes me. So everything started very small. And Rodial was a one-man band for the first three years. I didn't have any staffing. I was working from one room um, back at home. And I was t- um, taking phone calls, um, packing orders, going to the stores on the weekend, selling my product. So Rodial started super small. And I had no idea if my business would survive another day, another week, another month. And <laughs> Yeah, here we are today, 18 years later. <laughs> what a journey, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you know what I loved whenever I listened to your story? Um, I guess because marketing and seeing a gap in the market and those kinds of things, that's that's something that I'm really passionate about. It's something I teach when people ask me about business. Um, your first product, um, I'm going to give you a total marketing wrap, by the way, here. I'm just going like, to just sell your product <laughs> for you. But your first product was uh, snake venom. Is that right? Or was it dragon's blood? Not your snake first serum, one. correct? Oh, yeah, product. snake serum. Snake serum it was your first yeah. one, and I and and I I just as soon as I heard that name, whenever I heard you talk about it in the book, I was like, yes, that is so good because it's 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 I it's well eye catching, ear catching. It's something completely different. It's something you wouldn't associate with a with a face cream. So it makes people stop and pay attention. Um, tell us about your your brand and what you wanted to create with it. It sounds like it's almost like cosmetic surgery without the surgery like Botox fillers that kind of stuff but in creams is is that yes yes um and and that's um um when you mentioned snake serum this is uh the reason that I am where I am today due to a decision on a Wednesday morning to decide to name a product snake serum as opposed to anti-aging serum Mm -hmm. so this is what happened um that was it was year five uh by that point um we've we've grown a little bit i had a a couple of staff i hired we had the proper office so sitting um at my office i just got a box from the lab brown box with a couple of um, samples of the new anti-aging serum we've been developing um i tried on it felt amazing and uh, we're looking at the designs i had a designer there putting up some ideas Uh, calling it anti-aging serum and I said to my team guys if we call the product anti-aging serum I I mean it's going to get lost we're competing with the L'Oreal's and the Estee Lauder's and um, the Chanel's how are we ever going to compete in this market we're a small brand we have no advertising budget back in the day we didn't even have social media so how are we gonna break through and um, I had to look at the list of ingredients and one of the ingredients related to Viper Venom. So I said to my team, let's call the product Snake Serum. And they were like, oh my God, you're going to take us out of business. This is the end of us. It's but, you know, we started died. talking about it. We capitalized on, um, on the Viper Venom. We called the product Snake Serum. We did a photo shoot with snakes. And um, suddenly the product went viral. And a lot of people started paying attention to Rodial um, just by the attention that the name snake serum got and um it was dubbed as the alternative to botox because the way that um the this ingredient viper venom it's a synthetic ingredient by the way it's we're not killing snakes taking <laughs> for venom it it is it is made in the lab but um the way that it's manufactured it uh, mimics the effects of viper venom and how it works is when a snake bites you it paralyzes your muscles. And this ingredient is called cyanic peptide. It does the exact same thing. So when you apply it on your skin, it gives a mild freezing effect of the muscles that is the basis of Botox. So the result is um, 
not to the level of, of having the real injection, but by using it every single day, um, you get your muscles to freeze and um, you stop um, making um, movements with your face that create all the fine lines and wrinkles and you have a softer look. So that that is the whole idea. And uh, Snake Serum is the number one product that put Rodial in the map and it, it's still the product that everyone is asking for and a lot of people uh, associate Rodial with snake serum yeah well I think every brand has kind of a cult product though don't they I mean if I think about Estee mm. you mentioned earlier it's like their touche cla you know I think that is what kind of catapulted them onto the market um it probably is your cult product but you know what I mean what I have just realized um you there's a lot of vegans um I know we talked just very briefly before we started recording um about that and I do want to talk about it in a second but there's a lot of vegans who um don't get botox or fillers or you mm. know any cosmetic work done because they are pharmaceuticals which have to be tested on animals by law so actually this would be an incredible option for those now I'm not mm. full clarity one of those vegans I have my entire people always say to me god Kim you look so good for your age what's your secret I'm like my entire face is filled with fillers and I have Botox and everything that moves so <laughs> that's the only reason why but um so I am not one of those vegans but I uh, certainly there's a massive market of women who'd be listening to this podcast who would be looking for a non-surgical option uh, for that freezing effect. So for anyone who doesn't know about, um, again, I'm just totally selling your products for you here, but for anyone who doesn't know Thank you, thank you, products, thanks, Kim. <laughs> where's the best place that they can pick some up or they can try some? Do you have like a website or do you prefer to sell through third parties or tell us where um, Either way, we have our website. It's uh, it's Rodial Co. UK. Um, we ship internationally. So um, it, it's, uh, it's where you can find the biggest selection of products. We also have an amazing area that's called the outlet where um, it's it's a thing that I, I've been doing since the pandemic started where I would put some of my favorite products in the outlet for um, a weekend or a whole week at a fraction of the price just to get people to try them and then put them back into um, the regular stock so I would don't upset our retailers. Um, but then equally, uh, we work with um, some of the... Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think where you guys are. Uh, Space and K is one of our biggest retailers. Well, you know, most of, my, most of my listeners are in America, actually. Oh, wow. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So... Um, in the US, we are we we do ship actually. We have a US warehouse, so Rodialco UK ships um, uh, locally in the US as well. Uh, we also work with um, uh, with uh, Neiman Marcus online, with Nordstrom, with Blue Mercury, and here in the UK um, with uh, Surfridges, Harvey Nichols, and um, Space and Gay. So, yeah, I mean, pretty much if you Google Rodial, I'm sure you're gonna come up with a whole bunch of retailers in your region but thank you so much Kim this is it's it's great to hear um oh I love it no I, I love whatever you find like a perfect match you know vegans and you know who don't want to do Botox and here's a here's a, a product that you don't have to inject which gives you very similar results it's fantastic but absolutely you know, that's yeah an, absolutely mm. that's an impressive lineup of stores Maria that you just rolled off the tongue there <laughs> that stocks your products but what I want to ask is I mean, you grew up in Greece, which obviously is in Europe, and I, I'm in Europe as well. So I've I've been to Greece a few times. It's a beautiful country. Mm. Um, what like do you ever just look at yourself and think, "Holy shit, how did I get here?" <laughs> you know, growing up in 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 Greece, which is obviously just an island, and you know, looking at your success, do you ever have those moments where you just look back and think, "Wow." Um. You know what? I wish we all took the time to sit down and look back and assess our journey and, and be proud of the journey. And I don't think we do that enough, Kim, yeah, to right. be honest with you. I, I don't do it enough. I always look at the next day. But uh, back to your question, what's interesting with my journey is, and a lot of people ask me, um, oh, you must come from a family of entrepreneurs. You, you must have known since you were four years old that you wanted to run a business. And the answer, the answer is that... Um, I I wasn't. My my parents are both teachers. Um, they uh, they work for the public sector. So I was raised in an in a very safe environment that I was taught find a job that you will 
keep for life that will secure your future, that you don't have to worry about losing your job. This is the climate I was raised into. Mm -hmm. So everything that I've done in my life kind of goes against my upbringing. And that's another thing I talk about in my books that regardless of your background, regardless of how you were raised, your your circle of people, you, whether you went to uni or not, or, or or what school you attended, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's you and your vision, and 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 you wanting to make something out of your life to impact others in a positive way, or or just uh, have an exciting and interesting life that takes you out of where, where you started. So, um, my upbringing was just yeah as you said um back in Greece I was born in a small island and I just have um, an, an easy happy nice childhood but you know very low-key nothing exciting or extravagant um I I traveled uh for the first time when I was um uh, sort of 20, 22 years old so you know I haven't ticked any boxes in my life before I achieved what I achieved I I figured it out all by myself along the way that makes sense yeah yeah no I I totally get it and and I I think that you know people ask me me that as well obviously I'm not I'm not anywhere near as far down the line as you are I only started my company three years ago but we um we've done nine million in three years so wow amazing and I, yeah and it's all online and and so I guess that but I just I'm like you I just keep my head down I keep working my team keeps building and we keep adding and adding and adding to the team we have 26 people full-time worldwide now and people do say to me all the time you know friends of mine who'd known me for a long time or or whatever they say do you ever just oh my god Kim like what you've done is amazing and I go yeah 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 it's yeah it's good yeah you know and I'm still thinking of all the millions I still need to make and all the products I need to launch <laughs> and, and, you know and, and it doesn't really feel you never really feel like you've made it if you know what I mean you never really yeah yeah feel this feeling you thought you were gonna feel when you started out and you, you, you imagined having all this success and you know and imagine what it would be like to not have to worry about money and and it, you never really get there, do you? And I don't know whether maybe you have, but I certainly feel, I still feel like me at the end of the day, like I'm just starting out and I don't really know very much and I'm just fumbling through every day trying to, trying yeah. to make work with a little more money in the bank, I guess. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's the exact same thing. There, there there have been days over the last 18 years, like, I mean, some of the days were just unbelievable when... Um, you know, there was a time that we worked with Kylie Jenner and she was the brand ambassador for Nip and Fab. And this was her first ever beauty campaign. This was back six years ago before she had her own range. And we brought her over to London. And I just remember we had a uh, photo call at the Westfield and Kylie and I sort of fully dressed up, fully made up and just walking the red carpet to go to the photo call. And I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> Me in, with Kylie Jenner walking to a photo shoot. And I, I just, I was looking at my life and feeling so surreal, yeah. but then equally there are moments, um, you know, and there's been moments, um, I almost went bankrupt a couple of years ago and it's, it's only my book, Make It Happen, mm -hmm. that I just, I am there and thinking, I am this girl from this island in Greece who just got fired. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you are an entrepreneur, but in general, you know, where, wherever you are in life, you go through moments of not believing what is happening to you because it's so good. It's almost too good mm -hmm. of a moment. And then there's moments that you, you go back and you question yourself and, and you deal with challenges. And, the journey of every entrepreneur, it's never straight. It's never um, the only way is up. You have ups and downs and and that's what makes it exciting at the end of the day, right? Yeah, no, you're right. And I wouldn't change it for the world, but I, I guess I just sometimes expect, I know that I used to look at, I had a friend years ago um, whenever I was first starting out and she had built a company that in its third year of business, turned over four million pounds and I remember wow. just thinking like she was 
the pinnacle of success. I was just like, if I could just have a quarter of her success, I used to, you know, just not, um, not envy her as in like envy being one of the seven deadly sins, but I was, I was, I was jealous, but in a good way, we were good friends, you know? And I just, I wanted to have her success so badly. And I just thought she must feel a certain way. She must, you know, it must feel so wonderful to be her, but of course she had her demons too. And, and it wasn't, but I just wondered, did you, feel the same you know people keep saying to me oh it's so amazing what you've done it's so amazing and it doesn't really feel that amazing <laughs> you know it just kind of feels I just get on yeah it doesn't it doesn't I, I agree with you I when people see you from the outside and they see the magnitude of what you've achieved um they think of you of a, a certain way but uh, you you actually just said it very well you just feel you yeah and I think who you are doesn't really change no. um and yeah, it's it just you running your business, having your good days and bad days, but you never wake up thinking, oh my God, all this success, you know, I've had enough success. I don't need any more of that success. <laughs> nope. There's always the next goal and there, there's always the next challenge. And I mean, you know, the, the, the past couple of years, I, I've been a little bit more chilled than I was when I started my business and I, um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing things in a more Zen way. Um, I now have a, a really good team. I've recruited some amazing people over the years that I trust them. And I, I used to micromanage a lot and be on top of everyone every single minute. I needed to know what they were doing. And now I feel that I'm a better manager. We have our meetings every Monday. We talk about what we need to get done. I am available for them any any time of the day. They want to reach out, ask me a question, um, coach them, mentor them, everything that I can do to help. Um, but I find I've grown as a leader and as a CEO and this style works for, for my team, works for me. Um, because at the end of the day, you want to be successful, but you also want to be happy. Right. And they were when I first started, I was obsessing over every simple thing, uh, every single thing. And it, it just, um, you know, it gets to you. Yeah. yeah. And it can stress you out. So for me, yes, I want success. Uh, and success for me is making an impact on other people, whether that's um, making an impact on their skin or making an impact um, with my team and growing them or making an impact um, through my books and helping other um, young entrepreneurs to um, learn from my journey. And you know, these are the things that make me happy now more more than money. That I'm, I'm not chasing money. I'm chasing all the other things. Where did that come from, Maria? Did you have someone in your life that influenced you as a child, maybe a grandmother or your parents, someone who, who you really, did you make an impact as a child on someone or have that experience of taking care of someone and influencing them that that you carried with you throughout your life? I'm so interested in people's childhoods and there may not be, it's a curveball question, but I just thought I would ask. Um, I think I evolved to be who I am. Um, uh, I, there, there wasn't anyone um, specific. Um, I mean, having said that, I, I'm always um, learning from... Um, people that I look up to and I admire and um, whether it's business women or men or uh, reading biographies um, I, I read a lot and I there's a lot of people that I admire that whose biographies I, I read constantly and like when I started uh, I've read every single biography of Esther Lauder and mm -hmm. Eleanor Rubinstein and all the biographies of women who started beauty businesses, I had read and I've reread and reread. And um, what what happened is I, I picked up um, things along the way from reading, from interacting, and, and then everything that affects you during your career, then it manifests into being the person that you've been working on for the last 20 plus years. 
Yeah. Yes, I agree. I love that. I love that you studied the greats because that is something that I did when I started my business. We have a lot of women who listen to this podcast who do aspire to build businesses, um, which is why I, I love talking about it as well. But it is something that I did when I started my business. I basically just took a couple of massive industry leaders and I just I just went crazy figuring out what it is that they were doing. I read books, I read studies. I, I, you know, Apple was a huge one that I studied. Like, and I'm in, I'm in the online vegan bodybuilding world, but yet I studied Apple's marketing with mm. a fine tooth comb because I thought, well, if they're doing it and it's working, what is it about it? I was determined to figure out what is it that Apple are doing that is so good and so successful and makes you resonate with the brand so much because it does make, you know, resonates with me. We're all big Apple users in my company. Mm -hmm. So I love that you did that. I think that, and that is something I recommend that people do. You know, if you, if you want to be successful, you have to study the people who are doing it really, really well and not copy them, but certainly learn from them, learn yeah. under them and then take what works for you and apply it in your brand. You agree? Yes, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm conscious of the fact that we have like 15 minutes and I have like 15 questions. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try and choose quite, uh, choose quite carefully. And um, before I move on to, I have some family stuff I want to ask you and also veganism, but here's what I have to know. Okay. Yeah. I want to know, and I know that my listeners are going to want to know your personal skincare routine. If you are willing to share it with us, because honestly on Instagram, you look about 12. So you're doing something incredibly <laughs> correct. You have the most amazing skin. And I don't know whether you just use a good filter or <laughs> whether it's real. I would imagine it is if you're the head of a beauty Well, it, I, I'm going to share my routine with you. But also we developed this um, for the, long, for the um, one year anniversary of our banana low lighter. We launched banana low lighter filter mm -hmm. that uh, is amazing. And I would suggest if anyone's using a filter, this is a really good one. Uh, it just gives you light where the banana low lighter is applied under the eyes and also we put some light um on the eyelids because my eyelids get quite dark so yeah. anyway that's uh i am by the way filter and it's women downloading your filter right now <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but it's um it's visible in all my stories so i'm i'm pretty much um uh, you know i'm, I'm pretty time. open about using a filter and i tag it all the time um uh but then when it comes to uh skin um i do take care of my skin uh i just want to uh, really focus on some of the key um elements one is spf um mm -hmm. we just actually launched a new product called spf 50 drops uh, which is packed with hyaluronic acid and it also um has um a butterfly uh tree extract that helps with the blue light so we're spending a lot of time in front of our screens and phones and ipads and it protects from blue light uh, raise as well. Okay, so, um, okay, I need to SPF <laughs> um, is absolutely non-negotiable. Right. The other thing that changed my skin is using a balm cleanser. Um, when I was in my uh, late twenties, I developed um, acne. And I went to a dermatologist and he said, you're using a harsh cleanser. And I said, yes, because my skin is oily. And he said, stop using it. You have to start with a, a, a bone cleanser. So um, at the time, I, I didn't have the business. So I bought a bone cleanser and I started using a bone cleanser. So when we were ready to launch a cleanser, I said to my chemist, we have to do a bone cleanser because that transformed my skin and stopped me from having breakouts. So um, I've been using a bulb cleanser we have a Tell couple in the me. range one is called I'm, I'm trying to figure out are you saying bulb or bulb b-a-l-m bulb oh, bam okay sorry in, in belfast we say bam okay perfect uh, okay you got it so uh bam we cleanser. have perfect. um uh, there's uh, there, there's two cleansers that we have in our range. One is the Beef Venom uh, Balm Cleanser and the uh, Pink Diamond Balm Cleanser. They're equally, um, they do the same thing. So uh, definitely using the right cleanser for your skin for me is important. Mm -hmm. um, next ex is exfoliation. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is to get the glow of your skin. You have to get rid of dead skin cells. Mm -hmm. And... Um, for me, the easiest way to exfoliate is pads. So 
we developed the VTC pads that are actually the best selling product right now. And I exfoliate um, every night with those pads. They're easy to use. Um, if I get a breakout, sometimes I will get a hormonal breakout uh, on my chin, especially in wearing masks, you know, all that mask knee. Mm-hmm. So I would use the pads twice a day and they're amazing. Um, and these are, these are my three key tips that I want to share with everyone, whether they're using Rodial or not. SPF, uh, use the right cleanser of the skin, don't over cleanse, and then use um, some type of exfoliator. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on and talk about uh, make sure you hydrate your skin. I'm seeing a lot of um, women who uh, develop uh, fine lines and wrinkles and I look at their skin and it's massively dehydrated Mm. and you don't even need Botox or filler just by hydrating and going a little bit richer on your moisturizer or your eye cream in the evening can make a huge difference and anytime that you feel your skin pull just apply more you know you can never ever apply too much moisturizer if you feel that your skin needs it go for it um i mean i can i can go on and on but i need hours so well, let's just focus on those four I'm tips feeling complete without a moisturizer I, I definitely need a moisturizer recommendation yes. to complete my list here yes a hundred percent do you have a, your favorite one from the range because i'm literally writing these down for my assistant to purchase after we finished um, I, I go between the B Venom cleanser and the pink diamond cleanser. I love them both, um, equally. And I just go from one to the other. Um, and I actually, I use them both. I have them both in my bathroom. Interchangeably. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I want to switch. Uh, thank you for that, by the way. I hope that wasn't too intrusive, but I was done. <laughs> see your glowing skin on Instagram every day and your Bottega Veneta shoes, which I also salivate over. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm a bit of a shoe queen. I love my shoes. So what I would what I would love to ask though is, as a mother of four, who uh, I started my company uh, whenever well, I started to try to build an online company after my last son Jack was born. He was only a baby, um, and it it nearly killed me to be honest. But it was the best thing that I ever did. And I know that you started your company, and then you had your first. You have two boys, isn't that correct? Yes. Yes. And you started your first company after you had your first son. Um, it's just massively hard to do. So I would love to know how you managed it, how you, you know, I know you took a long time to build Rodeal. You were very methodical and very consistent with it, but how did you, how did you manage to do that in the beginning with, with two young boys, you know, one at the start and then another one shortly after? Um, so it was easier because I already had the business. I, ha- I have to say, I think that if um, my business was already five years in and then I wanted to start a family, my business would have been a lot more complicated and, and trying to juggle everything would be more difficult. So for me, the timing worked. Um so I've had, uh, I started my business and I think a couple of years later, I've had um, my first son um, and it was all new. It, it you know, No one gives you a manual how to combine a startup with a baby. <laughs> yeah. There was no manual like that. So, um, you know, I figured things out a day at a time, but I, at the beginning, the, the company was very small. I was working uh, from the back room at home, um, not because, you know, we have to right now, but because I didn't have the budget to get an office. So I was at home. The baby was at home. But then for me to do some focused work, I needed some help. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I've had um, I've had someone come in for a few hours a day and take care of the baby while I was focusing on the business. And then very early on, I took him to um, a nursery. Mm-hmm. So the minute, you know, you, you have to be, I think, two and a half, uh, he went to a nursery immediately that I could, some, yeah. somewhere local that was easy to drop off and pick up. So um at the beginning, it all worked fine because the business was still small. In a way, it was great that I didn't have investors because the expectations will be a cert- to deliver a certain type of sales. It was my business, 100% owned by me, so I could control the pace. So not getting funding was um, a blessing in disguise. And then... Um, 
yeah, I knew I wanted to have two just just to for for the kids to have have each other. I'm I'm a I have a sister, so I'm always used to having a, a sibling and and my my husband the same. So I wanted to have two for the sake of my son, so he is not an only child. So mm-hmm. I've had my second one, and it was pretty much the same situation. So having a little bit of childcare during the day, and then taking them to the nursery. Um, by the time that they were, um, let's say four and six, my business had grown a little bit more. So at that point, you have to make some sacrifices. So I would take them to school uh, the first week that the school started, but then there was a school bus. So they would take the school bus to get picked up and come back. Um, And I knew that I would have to make some um, sacrifices Mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to be able to be the perfect mom, um, you know, baking the perfect cupcakes for right. the school um, charity I day. I would <laughs> buy them from Max Spencer and right. and all that. So you have to make sacrifices, <laughs> yeah. don't you think? I totally agree. Like I, I have a friend uh, who works as well, and we always um, we always laugh. We're like, you know, we're not soccer moms. You know, like I'm yeah. not a craft mom. You know, I, as much I resigned myself years ago to the fact that as much as I adore my children and I love spending time with them, I am not a craft mom. I am. Mm. It is. It was kind of under duress when they were younger that I when I, I I was at home with them for the first many years whenever I was a stay at home mom, but. You know, I uh, I just always had bigger aspirations, and I think I just resigned myself to the fact that you know they're going to be happier when I'm happier. If I'm comfortable yeah. and happy in my life, and we're spending time together, not because we're, we're obligated to or it's forced on my yeah. part, it's going to be so much more enjoyable for them and for me. And you know what? I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to. So going into it with that mindset of I'm not going to be perfect, I think just gave me the the give me permission to just wing it, you know, make mistakes yeah. the way and not be perfect, not, not try to be. It's, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I agree. When you do suffer from mom guilt, like I used to reach the end of the day and feel like I had disappointed at least one child, you know, <laughs> I really did. Well, you have four, so there's always uh, <laughs> really tough, but really, it really was tough. Um, and actually one of the secrets to my success, which I do teach a lot is I, I very quickly replaced myself. Like I had a husband who worked full time. And so the only way I could grow the business was to replace myself. So as soon yeah. as I could, I hired a full-time housekeeper and then I mm. hired a full-time nanny and I hired well, a full, full-time nanny first and then a full-time housekeeper and then a full-time mm chef so like all my jobs that I did at home I had to replace myself with with people mm-hmm. in order to you know to keep my life or to build my build my business but you just do it yeah I guess if you just you know my advice whenever people ask me like oh how do you do it how do you manage your life how do you not feel guilty I'm like you're gonna feel guilty you cannot mm-hmm. not feel guilty you cannot be perfect you cannot you, you you're gonna make mistakes and you're someone's gonna be disappointed but you know what disappointment is part of life your children have to learn to cope with it and as long as you love them and you're not hurting them and you're wanting the best for them and you're loving them the best way you can that's really all you can do you know yeah yeah all you can do we you know I don't know it is a, it is a hard one I do feel you okay one last question before we finish um this has been so wonderful I, I wish we could do a part two because I have so many more questions <laughs> I want to ask you. um I would love to ask, and we kind of did talk, well, <laughs> I have two questions. Okay, I'm going to try and slip two again. First one is, uh, if you could give some advice, if you could give advice to someone starting out in business, what would it be? Um, I get a lot of questions from um, fr- from women, especially saying, um, I've been doing research for a number of years and I haven't, I have it figured out, but not a hundred percent. And I have a design, but I want to tweak it to make it perfect. And my advice is if you have it figured out 60%, go and launch your business. Don't wait for the perfect moment because that perfect moment will never come. Times are changing. And for me, it's better to go and launch with um, almost having figured it out, not 100%. You will get feedback. You will learn something. You've taken action. Rather than wait for the perfect moment, this may never come. You may end up procrastinating and you may lose the momentum. 
so yeah just go for it that's my advice such good advice it's a yeah I think it's so true and then the last question if I may is and you kind of covered this a little bit earlier but it's kind of my signature question I like to finish with which is why do you do what you do every day what is your why um that is the million dollar question Kim (laughs) why why do we do what we do um what drives you though in particular like what do you want to see more of in the world what's what's important to you uh, on a personal level, I like to wake up every day and be creative. I love to wake up every day and challenge myself and find a solution so I can keep sharp. I, I can keep learning. For me, learning is very important. Um, and even during the pandemic, I mean, believe it or not, I never spoke to camera before the pandemic. I did my first Instagram story uh, speaking to camera uh, last March. Really? Uh, just because, yeah, I was self-conscious about how I look, about my voice, and I didn't want to be seen. And I had no other choice when we went into the pandemic. I had to communicate with um, with our community. So for me, it's all about learning something new every single day. And even though no one likes challenges, no one likes problems, um, at the end, the challenges and the problems are the ones that make us change the way we think, learn something new and progress. And for me, I don't have an end goal. Um, a lot of people ask, oh, you, do you, are you growing the business to sell? Uh, no, it's, and it's, we're still private 18 plus years later. Mm-hmm. For me, it's being creative, making an impact, having fun with my team, um, going to bed at the end of the day, being happy that I made an impact, whether it's on a customer who had breakouts and and we we um, cleared their skin, to a member of my team who's happy because they're progressing in their careers, to someone who read my book and impacted their life and their business. For me, I don't have one big thing that I'm working towards. It's small things that we do throughout the day that make me happy, and and that's what I like to keep doing. I love that. And you know, it, do you not find that the more lives that you impact, the more you want to impact? Whenever you realize you can positively impact someone's life, it, it, it's not that it's addictive, but it, you, you, you want more of it in a way. I, I feel the yeah. same, that you get that feedback and you're like, oh, wow, that thing I did was, you know, it's like a little positive affirmation, I guess, a little hit of dopamine, you know, that thing I did really helped mm. that person. Let me do more of things to help people. It becomes addictive. And I think that it's a wonderful addiction because we're helping more people and therefore, you know, hopefully, hopefully enriching more lives. Definitely. Uh, really, yeah. This has been so wonderful. Tell my listeners where they can find you. Where's the best place for them to follow you or find you or connect with you? Um, so, um, my handle is at Mrs. Rodial, and this is on all platforms on, uh, Instagram, TikTok. I'm also on Clubhouse and yeah, um, you can, uh, download my two books that are on Audible and Kindle and paperback, how to be an overnight success, how to make it happen. Um, and yeah, that's where you can find me at Mrs. Rodial, my handle oh. everywhere. So. Yeah, wonderful. And also your your company is rodial.com, R-O-D-I-A-L.com. We will link to it all in the show notes, but I just wanted to give it an extra special shout out. To yes, that. it's um, it's co-UK for now. It's going to oh, turn into dot .com in, um, in a couple of months. So I don't know when this episode will air, but try um, well, in Thursday. either way. It's going on Thursday. We we do everything. We're very last minute. Oh, amazing, so amazing, amazing. Right amazing. Like Thursday. So it's uh, it's co UK right now. We're gonna change it to dot com. But uh, yeah, uh, people. Yeah, everyone who's listening, we are a global company. So even though it's co UK, we ship internationally from a local warehouse. So yeah, yeah just making a note. Thank you, Kim, for having me. This is is the highlight of my day today. Um, you Ooh. are amazing. I love your work. I love your podcast. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. We didn't even talk about veganism, but let me make an announcement that Maria went vegan last September. Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, I, I went vegan and I am feeling so, so much better um, in, in my skin. My skin looks better. I digest my food better. I sleep better. It just has transformed my life. So 
I'm just I so excited to be in this podcast with like-minded vegan, yeah. um, beautiful people. Well, I didn't think it was possible to love you more, but now I definitely do. Uh, <laughs> Maria, thank you so much. Um, Maria Hatsistefanis, I'm going to just say it one more time because I'm proud that I can say it. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, let's keep in touch on Instagram. And, Absolutely. Um, and we, we will obviously send you links to the podcast and everything when it airs. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Kim. Take Go care. Bye, my love. Oh, my God. Did you not just love Maria? Wasn't she wonderful? Oh, she and I had a wee chat after I stopped recording and I was giving her advice on vegan proteins and about protein carbs and about how I eat. And then she said, and I said, to, I would send her some plans. And then she was like, well, I would love to send you some of, you know, Rodeal products. And I was like, oh, I'm just such a groupie. Like, I love getting stuff for free. I just love getting stuff for free. Like, it's funny, the more, even though you make loads of money, you just love getting stuff for free. And interestingly, the more money you tend to make, the more stuff you tend to get for free, which really doesn't seem fair, but that just seems to be the way it happens. So um, I will be certainly testing out the products that she was speaking about on the podcast. Um, I will let you guys know here on the podcast and on Instagram just how good they are, which I'm sure they will be fabulous. And if they make me look as good as Maria, well, that's a win-win for everybody. Um, so I'm going to leave you now. Um, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. Tune in next week for why I've started squatting and deadlifting again. And I was squatting and deadlifting today. And I'm really, really, really enjoying it. And I'm going to tell you why I made this decision and what I'm doing to protect my back, which was the reason why I decided not to squat again, but not because I'm obviously doing it. Um, we're going to dive into all of that next week. So I will catch up with you then for another episode of the Kim Constable podcast. Have a wonderful week wherever you are. Thank you so much for listening. I love you loads and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.